John Calvin on Psalm 1, verses 3 through 6. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The psalmist shows in what respect those who fear God are to be accounted happy, namely, not because they enjoy an evanescent and empty gladness, but because they are in a desirable condition. It is the blessing of God alone which preserves any in a prosperous condition. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. With the figure of the faithful bringing forth their fruit in season, the psalmist meant that the children of God constantly flourish. They are always watered with the secret influences of divine grace, so that whatever may happen to them is conducive to their salvation. On the other hand, the ungodly are carried away by the sudden tempest or consumed by the scorching heat. He expresses the full maturity of the fruit produced, whereas, although the ungodly may present the appearance of precocious fruitfulness, yet they produce nothing that comes to perfection. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. The psalmist's mind is seriously pondering on the destruction which awaits the ungodly and will at length overtake them. The meaning, therefore, is, although the ungodly now live prosperously, yet by and by they shall be like chaff. For the Lord has brought them low, he shall scatter them with the blast of his wrath. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. The prophet teaches that a happy life depends on a good conscience. We now see how the psalmist pronounces the ungodly to be miserable because happiness is the inward blessing of a good conscience. God is the judge of the world. Granting this, it follows that it cannot be well with the upright and the just, while on the other hand, the most terrible distraction must impend over the ungodly. Instead, therefore, of allowing ourselves to be deceived with their imaginary felicity, let us, in circumstances of distress, have ever before our eyes the providence of God, to whom it belongs to settle the affairs of the world, and to bring order out of confusion.